we switch now to, to labor and um, recently um, a seminar was held um, highlighting the contribution of Adrian Kola Rienzi to the labor movement here in um, Trinidad and Tobago and uh, one of the people behind it um, was uh, Dr. Jerome Tilak Singh and nice to have you here this afternoon doctor. Thank you. And um, first of all um, tell us why the decision was made to mount a seminar like this. Right. Adrian Kola Rienzi was born in 1905. Mm -hmm. So last year, 2005, was supposed to be the 100th anniversary, the centenary of his birth. And I was hoping that either the OWTU or the Sugar Union or maybe the university would have come together and have a seminar to celebrate this anniversary of this man. And nothing was held last year. So I felt that this year we should have something to educate the public. Yes. Now, um, a lot of people may not know, I mean, the, the most, um, some people would hear of Rienzi is that Rienzi complex. Right, um, correct. You know, the home of the UNC and so on. Right. But um, he had made a tremendous um, contribution. Mm -hmm. I think um, Dr. Brinzi Samaru was one of the people who had done some, some work yes. um, on, on the life of Adrian Kola Rienzi. But um, just uh, to give, um, you know, our public um, an idea of some of the mm -hmm. things that, um, that he has done in terms of contributing to the labor movement. Right. Yes. I'm glad you mentioned the Rienzi complex because there's also the Rienzi Curtain Highway yes. near to yes. Skinner Park. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And a lot of people have found it an injustice that it wasn't just named Rienzi Highway. They had to add on curtain, you know, because mm -hmm. one of the reasons he served in the San Fernando Borough Council for three terms, mm -hmm. right? He was the mayor. And what is interesting is that at Harris Promenade, a lot of people have been wondering why we don't have a statue there, we have a statue of Marcus Garvey, we have a statue of Gandhi, right? Even in Port of Spain, why we don't have a statue of Rienzi? And I don't think that the public in Trinidad appreciate the contribution. He started to work with Adrian, with Captain Atta Andrew Cipriani, mm -hmm. right? In the Trinidad Working Men's Association, he was the president of the San Fernando branch. And after that, he worked as a law clerk for a short while. He attended Naprima College. And he went to England, right? Qualified as a lawyer during 1930 to 1934, he became involved in anti-imperial groups, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? He joined groups in Ireland, spoke to thousands of persons, and he was also fighting for India's liberation. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. When he came back here, 1934 to 1937, he was involved with Chubali Raya Butler, right? He formed his own group, Trinidad Citizens League. And what I found interesting is that 1930s, 1920s was an era when party politics was not race-based. Mm -hmm. It was based on class, the working class solidarity. It was ideology. You would hear about socialists, communists, Marxists. You know, right today we have two main parties yes. based on the two major races, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it is very interesting that he bridged that racial gap. The enemy was Britain, right? The white man imperialism was the enemy and it is unfortunate that we have allowed ourselves to be divided yes. and he made a significant contribution in the trade union movement not just party politics mm -hmm. first president general of the OWTU and the all Trinidad sugar union and after that stint with the trade union movement he became involved with the government the executive council he became a senior council so a lot of people have failed to realize that these are phases in his life party politics trade unionism and later on the government mm -hmm. he served as a member for victoria from 1938 to 1944 right in the legislative council that's what parliament was called then yes now his name was not always adrian colarienzi what um, prompted uh, the the change right i'm glad in, you his name right i'm glad you brought that up he was originally called krishna deonarine mm -hmm. and then Later on, somewhere between 1927, he decided to adopt the name Adrian because there was an English magistrate who helped him a lot at San Fernando at his law office and he took up this name Adrian. And then there was a revolutionary called Cola de Rienzo, 14th century Italy we are looking at during the Renaissance time and he decided to adopt this revolutionary's name. So it's very interesting that we are seeing here a Trinidadian taking part of an English name, yes. an Italian name, <laughs> combining it here to create something unique. Yes. And then later on in the 1940s, he adopted the name Desh Bandhu, mm -hmm. an mm -hmm. Indian name. Mm -hmm. So what, what is very interesting with this Rienzi character is that 
he is an East Indian. Yes. He finds his identity. He's linked with India, but he's also a proud West Indian. Mm -hmm. He's concerned about his country. Later on, he's concerned about Caribbean unity. If Renzi were alive, he'd be very happy about CSME. You know? <laughs> the integration process. The integration process, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. He was somebody who was involved in these West Indian labor conferences. So usually, you know, today when somebody pushes a Afro identity or mm -hmm. Indo identity, you might say that person is a racist. Yeah. Or that person creating tribalism mm -hmm, or problems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Rienzi was very flexible. He, we are seeing him moving between two mediums. East Indian, West Indian. Yes. Right? And as I said before, earlier, it is interesting that he made friendships with Cipriani and Butler, two non-Indians. Mm -hmm. right? And it's something that we needed in the labor movement. As you would know, the labor movement is fragmented yes. along racial yes. lines. Yes. We know about MPAT, mm -hmm. the doctors. Mm -hmm. We know about the PSC, OWTU. They have always been, unions have always tended to be in the back pockets of some politicians. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Well, we could leave that for another discussion yeah. at some other time. Um, but what would you say was his, his major contribution to, to, to the labor movement, his, his philosophy, uh -huh. um, you know, what, what guided his whole, you know, his whole principle as it related to the labor movement? Right. He was mm -hmm. a man who had morals. Mm -hmm. He was a man who had ideas. He had a vision of a united working class movement. Mm -hmm. He, had a, he started up an umbrella organization, the Committee of Industrial Organization, just as we have um, Natuk today. And he hoped that the unions would become united. He was involved in the early unions, 1937, 1940s, helping form these unions, Federated Workers Trade Union. So he was concerned about letting the workers know their rights, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. preventing exploitation. He was concerned, extremely um, concerned about the workmen's compensation. You know, right mm -hmm. now we have something about the OSHA going yes, on. OSHA? Yes, yes. He represented a few workers who were injured, right? Mm -hmm. Even when he was in legislative council, he was dealing with issues like poverty, social services. Mm -hmm. He was looking at constitutional reform. He was very adamant that in 1941, when the Franchise Commission was there, mm -hmm. he was saying, why are you denying the Indians voting rights because they cannot speak English? Yes. You know, the Indians yes. spoke their dialects, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Bhojpuri and Urdu. Mm -hmm. So we could see here that even then, there was this need for constitutional reform. Mm -hmm. 1925, we only allowed seven elected members. The rest were nominated by the governor. So what is happening here is that Rienzi was constantly undermining the system, and he was hoping to ensure that universal adult suffrage would be achieved. Mm -hmm. So we see him in that way as a pioneer. Yes. And a lot of people don't appreciate that, yeah? Because he's not physically there, you know, like Cipriani mm -hmm. with a mm -hmm. statue. Mm -hmm. So it's very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, what would you say? I, I, I want to ask about his relationship with Butler because mm -hmm. I know that, um, you know, he was around in that time. Correct. Now, there, there may be um, a lot more written about Butler, mm -hmm. what transpired in 1937 and so on with right. the labor riots, but not so much about, you know, um, Cola Rienzi because right. I, I was very surprised about, what, you know, what constituted or what led to the name change right. when I, I heard a lecture at UWE um, about a year and a half ago by... Professor by Samaru. Yes, yes, and I thought it was very interesting, you know. Right. And so not much is, I think, documented. I, mm -hmm. I don't know if you all are working on any project to have yes. this um, properly documented. Professor Samaru is working on a book right now, okay. and it should be published next year. Okay. He is one of the leading researchers. Yes. We have an article by Professor Kelvin Singh a few mm -hmm. years ago in a journal. Mm -hmm. But it is something very interesting that you ask about Butler. A lot mm -hmm. of people don't know that when Butler was jailed, it was Rienzi who contacted West Indians in New York, mm -hmm. and he told them, send down some money to help with lawyer fees. Yes. You know? Yes. So, and Mitra Sinanan, an East Indian, was a lawyer for Butler. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? And whilst Butler was in jail, Butler ensured that Rienzi was in charge of the OWTU, carrying it going. Yes. So we are seeing Rienzi is that, he's seen as the rational person, the organizer. Right? Whereas Butler was like a little rabble rouser mm -hmm, sometimes, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> Always agitating the authorities, yes, threatening yes. a strike, mm -hmm, a mm -hmm. protest. Now, what is interesting that the division between the two men in the 1930s mm -hmm. was not based on race, but it was more a personality clash. It was more, you could say, ego. I saw that tension between these yes, two men. Yes. Um, Butler was a bit agitated when he came out of prison 
and he realized that Rienzi was president general entrenched in the OWTU mm -hmm. and he wanted to be there as president general. Right? So there's this tension during that time. Mm -hmm. Cipriani, Butler, Rienzi, the threesome that gave the colonial authority some problem mm -hmm. and the governors were extremely happy to see they were fighting among them. Yes, yes. Divide and rule tactic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? okay. So it, a lot of people don't know that, that he played a pivotal role in 1937. Mm -hmm. right? And I feel that what we need is some more lectures looking at this this 1930s. Yes. We have a lot to learn. Yes. yes. From that era. And yes, and I think his contribution should not go unnoticed. Um, mm. You know, in, in terms of you know the documentation that that is there to right. to really you know point people mm -hmm. um, or, or guide people in terms of um, you know the contribution that he made right. to to the labor movement.